what everyday skill becomes suspicious if you're too good at it. Moving through unreasonably tight and cluttered spaces normally, my friends and I used to hang out at an extremely cluttered warehouse that belonged to a hoarder friend. It was full to the point where moving at all without getting stuck on something or causing a garbage avalanche was difficult, and there I was just gliding through hills of hoarded garbage like some kind of ghost, they told me it was creepy. I used to be an executive assistant to many people with specific wants and needs. I got really, really good at remembering what people liked based not only on what they would tell me but also the things they would do and how they'd react. I eventually became the guy that takes care of things before they become a problem. Sometimes it can be a superpower, but other times people get weirded out by it. I started playing on the Switch to force myself to play honestly, without cheats slash mods, and I really appreciate the new feature that'll log the various residents' likes, dislikes based on what you've already given them, and on notes you've read and things they or other characters have mentioned in conversations. There was a Greek bartender at this whiskey bar in my hometown that would do the same thing. Every time I came in I looked different. He still remembered my drink. First time I was on my Harley, so I looked like a biker. Second time was a date a few months later so I was dressed nicer and my beard was better groomed. Third time was probably just standardish blue jeans and white t-shirt. Again a couple of months later, no matter what I was wearing or which girl I was with, or how much time passed. I'd sit down at the bar and he'd look at me for a few seconds like he was digging through his memory, and say old fashioned right, that dude was eerily good at that and cool as shit. Cleaning liquid spills. If Junior knocks over their glass or the cat gets too close and personal with the fish tank, most people just tend to throw a bathroom towel over it or get out the wet vac. Not super effective and tends to allow time for staining. Some salt, aerosolized carpet foam, and some paper towels will clean up anything like it was never there and in record speed. And all for the low, low price of making people uncomfortable as they imagine you as a mob cleaner. For extra points, using this method to clean blood out of carpets or off cheap or style equals people's faces are funny as fuck. Edit. Thanks for the awards. Consider my disposals at your disposal, but don't get used to it. I ain't running no charity here. So when I was young and bored on car trips my mom would always try to get me to play the license plate game. TPE, tape, terpene, terpsichore, timpani. Mom, timpani is with an I not an E, you mistype. Tamponade. Turns out the reason mom was so obscenely good at the game that she could referee it instantly and near perfectly is that apparently she is playing it basically at all times just without saying anything about it. Dot 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 but if something goes down, there is a near 100% chance mom will know the license plate of the car in question. She has proven this way too many times. In case anyone is genuinely interested, kids are smarter than adults take them for, and have a keen sense of when someone is only interacting with them out of enlightened self-interest. The main way to get kids to trust you is to interact with them with respect to their agency, and for them to understand that all of your interactions with them are only for their best interest. Kids can totally pick up on the vibes of people who see them as like cute stuffed animals or whatever rather than humans who deserve a level of respect. Source, experience as head lifeguard, digital English tutor and karate instructor. Kids can totally pick up on the vibes of people who see them as like cute stuffed animals or whatever rather than humans who deserve a level of respect. Looking back. All my favorite adults when I was a kid always seemed to take us seriously without treating me like a kid and now I get along with all my young relatives because I try to avoid obviously patronizing them. I tend to remember odd shit people say for years. It tends to freak people out. 
The worst reactions are when someone was just making up something for a story and have no memory of saying it in the first place. This is me. I remember conversations, jokes, dates, hangouts, text messages, meme exchanges and on and on dot 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 and it is weird when ages has passed and I make a joke or say hey like that time we were talking about. And they have zero idea because it was literally 18 months ago. I have also bought gifts for people based on this stuff and they just end up confused and not sure of the relevance. Strep throat tests. Used to get strep a lot as a kid so by the time I was tested for it as a 20 year old I had the process down. They stick in the big popsicle stick to hold down your tongue and then they swab the back of your throat while you try not to gag. Well I happen to be tested by relatively new, young, attractive doctor this particular time and when he complimented me on doing well on the test and not gagging my response was, thanks. I've had practice. If not suspicious it was at the very least mortifying after realizing the implication of what I said. M's Excel. I found that by taking over reporting from others because it took them so much time, I'd automate it to pull from the database where the previous owner was spending two hours a day copy slash paste hundreds of cells. A couple hours work once and I hit a button, done. I'd used to release right away. Even with the script to open, refresh, save, and email it, this caused people to not trust the numbers so now I still pull in the data but hold off on releasing it for a bit, even a bit late on occasion. Ha! Huh. I had a guy give me a stack of papers and say that these had to be put into Excel in their past database. Said it normally takes three days. I laughed, scanned them all into PDF converted to text and then automated it. I was done with a double check a couple hours in. He didn't believe me so went through them all by hand. Took him two days and he didn't find any errors. Being unbothered by blood and guts. I'm a veterinarian. I've spent days up to my elbows in all manner of bodies and parts and fluids. I can watch surgery or necropsy videos over lunch. I did an eye surgery on Tuesday and somebody had to catch the new kid. The big ones aren't allowed to get faint. It's very inconvenient. Related aside, when the nice young lady at the bank says, Oh my god, there's blood on your shirt. Assuring her that it isn't your own in fact offers no reassurance. I have a friend who just knows random stuff, like he is damn near lawyer level of proficient with things like legal procedure, technical knowledge to include how to bypass code locks, is really smart on finance and how to take advantage of situations, all sorts of stuff. He's not a spy or criminal, he just loves to google this stuff and will read for hours on end about it, but to those who don't know him, he's suspect. <coughs> this is gonna sound weird but I'm say it. A few years ago, it was my dad's funeral. My brother and I, 23 and 19 at the time, sat on this front row. My mom stayed with my family. The priest who did the service knew us as it is a small town and he's been around for a long time. We started laughing BC of how he was phrasing his sentences, and BC we had the impression that he was looking at us. He wears these weird glasses and it does seem like he's constantly looking at you. My brother explained that to me, which resulted in us laughing even more. It was a short service but we spent most of it laughing. Obviously as quietly as we could. I'm glad I have that fun memory of that sad time. Yep, when I was 14, a huge chunk of vision in one of my eyes randomly disappeared while I was in a class. I just looked at the teacher and calmly asked excuse me, I can only see half of everyone's faces right now semicolon the other halves look oddly translucent and I also can't read. Can I go? My classmates were slightly freaked out. Ed, my vision did come back soon after. Spatial awareness. I can look at something and tell you whether or not it will fit onto a wall, into a box or car, through a hallway or stairwell. 
etc. I was at a shipping store a few months ago and a guy was in line behind me trying to figure out which size box to get for the box he was trying to fit into it. I pointed at the specific size and said, that one, but only if you put your box in this side up. It slid in perfectly and he gave me the weirdest look. Somehow though, I always seem to bump into the corners of tables. Remembering things about them they forgot. I told my friend I was getting a job at a store we know. She told me, I think I've been there before. Then I told she has and I repeated the conversation we had. Word for word, I got some weird looks from her lol. I'm good at stuff like that. My friend and I were talking about a hike and I mentioned that we have already done it. She said we hadn't yet. So I told her the approximate date, what we did before and after, what we talked about on it, etc. If you ask me what I had for dinner yesterday, I would struggle. Some people are only stopped by the opportunity. Some people are stopped by a sense of obligation and fairness. Some people are stopped by what Simon Sinek calls the infinite game. Cheating helps you win today. Sooner or later you get caught and your friends don't want to play any with you anymore. You lose forever. So the real optimum strategy to have the most wins over the very long term is to play fair and accept some losses. But yeah, anyone can choose to fuck over their friends anytime they want. Some people are assholes who don't care what their friends think, agents of chaos who don't look beyond the end of their nose, or the kind of person who thinks it was just a prank. Bro, can excuse any type of shitty behavior. I kid you not, when I was a kid the apartment I lived in could be opened with a butter knife. We'd lock ourselves out and just ask the neighbor for a butter knife and get back in. Strangely, there was an unspoken code that we would never use one to enter someone else's apartment. My brother had a friend growing up whose house front door lock was broken and if you jiggled it just right would unlock. All fun and games till my brother went to visit on a holiday from college and barged in as was his tradition only to find his buddy's family moved. Luckily the new owners weren't home and he noped out quickly. This is literally how the series Psych starts. The main character, Sean Spencer, is too good at being observant, and because he kept sending tips to the local police, they called him in for questioning because they thought he might be involved in all those crimes, so he has to pretend to be a psychic. Edit. Now two of my most upvoted comments are psych-related, which is great because it's my favorite show, but don't waste money on me guys. Okay maybe you're someone I can share a weird thought with. I see this one commercial lately. The backdrop is a garage sale. One of the random items is an orange pineapple. Every time I see it I wonder if there's a central props warehouse and how that all works and etc. Because psych slash pineapples. Like where did all those come from and later end up? I'm sure props are shared company wide but I wonder if there's something more central. Like a props warehouse 13 lol. Anyway, the commercial is for some kind of medication, Rx, IDK, but I damn sure notice that pineapple even when I don't mean to. Cleaning out stains. I cut my hand pretty badly once and blood got into my white shirt. I tried to clean it myself but the stain never got out. I told my mom who told me to bring it with me when I came back for Christmas break and she cleaned it. By the way she didn't even bleach it. Her ability to clean stains so well has since then been suspicious to me. Breaking into someone's car. A few years ago I was at a new job and a co-worker locked her keys in her car. I got the door open in under a minute. The security guard watched me and had some concerns with the speed at which I opened that car without damaging it. Truth of the matter is that the guard wasn't paying attention completely to what I was doing. My first car was a two-door sports car and I learned about a design flaw with those cars when my demo locked my keys in the ignition. She had a similar car and her keys in the ignition. So I took advantage of that design flaw to get her door open without damage to the car. 
I drove multiple different vehicles in my youth and locked myself out of each and every one. As such I also became proficient in unlocking all cars. It weirded a few PPL out and made a few PPL think I'm some criminal but I wouldn't change a thing as it allowed me to save a baby. Was working at a pawn shop and the mom accidentally shut the door while removing her TV from the back seat with the baby still in the car. In a panic her and my manager and a few good customers all tried to help her as I finished up with my customer. 15-ish minutes later when I finished my work I hear the mother freaking out on the phone as the soonest anyone could come to unlock her car was 50 minutes. I ran outside and unlocked the car in one minute flat, came back in and told the lady she could cancel the rescue and hang up now as the other guardian came in behind me carrying the baby. The mother was so happy she gave me a hug with so much love and appreciation that I will never forget. Also she gave me $20 which I said was unnecessary but she insisted as $20 for a quick rescue is the lowest she was willing to go after she got quoted $60 for the 50 minutes job. We play this drinking game where you take the paper bag from the store, put it on the floor standing up, and you have to bend down on one foot and grab it with your teeth, each round. You trim a few centimeters off the top and keep flowering the bag until there's a winner. One of my very unathletic friends at the time would easily, easily win every round. It would just be him and he was flexible enough to get the bag only six inches off the ground. People were super impressed and I joked it's all that practice from sucking your own dick and the look he gave me, combined with the awkward laugh, made me think I might have been closer to the truth than I would have hoped. Guessing passwords. I had video games addiction during young age. My parents changed the PW once a week because I kept guessing it. When they say a word in a weird way, paying close attention to their facial expression, listening to their taping sound slash the state the keyboard is and are things that helped me. But the key is to know how the person thinks. I'm also able to remember most passwords that I have seen once inadvertently. I'm very good at getting detailed information in my peripheral vision, I don't have to be looking directly at someone to study them, makes me sound like a pervert, but it's a skill I developed because of working, living in situations where letting someone know you're watching them had bad consequences, but so was being ignorant of what they were doing, it's really fucking handy, also, somewhat related, reading upside down has had its benefits. In my line of work, sales, there is a method called mirroring where you try to mimic the customer's tone and energy to be more relatable. I've spent many years trying to read people and am introverted as it gets, so I like to think I do this very well, with my fellow man being the easiest to read. Well, my employer noticed this and refers to it as an advanced sales tactic. They pulled me into a Zoom with other employees who suck at closing sales and had me try to teach it to them. My grandpa, I swear he was magic, could always find a front row parking spot for anywhere we went. It didn't matter if people were parking out in the grass. If he drove up to the front there was always a spot, if there wasn't then immediately someone would pull out of their spot to leave. Always, sadly, he did not pass down this magic to anyone. This matches well with my grandma who is absolutely, 100%, a fine. It doesn't matter what kind of plant it is or what weather we have, her plants are always perfect. They bloom early and keep blooming way longer than they should. We had a nice storm this last winter that took out so many trees. Every tree around my grandma's house was damaged and had broken limbs. Not hers. Her trees were fine. What? Question mark. When I was a kid, we had these blue bonnet books that you could read for prizes if you got a good score on the comprehension test. My teacher accused me of cheating because I was reading them too fast. 
so she sent me to the library and had the librarian watch me while I read one and then the librarian administered the test. I got to act like a smug little shit for a minute when the librarian told her I aced my test. Then I got lectured anyway on how long-term comprehension doesn't happen when you speed read and that I shouldn't be reading just for the prizes. The next teacher I had, third grade, rather than being suspicious about it, tested my reading level. I scored ninth grade, and she asked me about GT classes. Apparently I had been in them. Then moved and when I came back, they misplaced me. Got moved back into GT and noticed the way teachers treated me from then on was light night and day. Learned a lot about bias though.